What does science have to say about the origin of the universe? There are many different scientific theories, but the most widely accepted is the Big Bang. So let's start there. The Big Bang is largely based on discoveries made by Edwin Hubble. Using the 100-inch Hooker telescope in Wilson Observatory in California, Hubble concluded that distant galaxies were moving away from us. If galaxies are moving away from us and we run the tape backwards, then it means that at some time in the distant past, all those galaxies must have been much closer to us and if we keep going back in time, at some point everything must have been tightly compressed into an infinitesimal point that exploded in a big bang. Hubble further concludes that not only is the universe expanding, but that the rate of expansion is increasing. That is a rough basis of the Big Bang Theory. There are many who disagree with the Big Bang, but it is the leading scientific cosmological theory. Can it be right? Before we can answer that, there are two other very important scientific discoveries that we have to consider. I don't know in what order to mention them because you need to know both of them before you can form any opinion. I'll start with the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. Many of you may already have heard of this. The Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle states that the more precisely the position of a particle is determined, the less precisely its momentum can be known, and vice versa. The reason for this has nothing to do with the instruments being used to take the measurements. The problem is in the actual act of measuring. When you try to study a particle, you have to observe the particle. Once you try and observe such subatomic particles, the photons of light disturb the particle and cause it to change either its position or its momentum. So the very act of trying to measure the particle alters the state of the particle. Some people argue that this means that science can never be as objective as they claim or pretend to be because they are only a part of the universe. When they try to study the universe, they are in fact influencing the experiment and become purely subjective. The second important discovery we have to consider is Richard Feynman's double slit experiment, which shows the wave particle duality of light. The experiment is conducted by firing a beam of light toward a screen pierced by two parallel slits. The wave nature of light causes the light waves passing through the two slits to interfere, producing bright and dark bands on the screen. This is a result that would not be expected if light consisted of classical particles. However, the light is always found to be absorbed at the screen at discrete points as individual particles, not waves. So light is behaving as both a particle and a wave. Google the experiment. I will post a, a link to a very good YouTube video by Dr. Quantum demonstrating this under this video's description. When you watch this video, remember it is the same for photons and electrons. The most mind-boggling part of all of this is that when they try to track a single particle to see exactly how it behaved and what path it was taking, the particle acted only as a particle and not as a wave. Once again, the very act of trying to observe the particle influenced the experiment and instead of taking many paths as a wave would do, the particle only takes a single path as a physical particle would. It is almost as if the particle knows it is being watched. The observer collapsed the wave function simply by observing the particle. The bottom line is that light takes all paths simultaneously. It is everywhere at the same time. But when you try to study light, you will only see a single path or a single history. Now go back to Hubble. Hubble uses his telescope to look out into space, he is studying the path of galaxies. But in fact, he cannot see those distant galaxies exactly as they are because the light from those galaxies take millions of light years to reach us. He is not seeing the actual galaxies. He is in fact only seeing the light from those galaxies. Scientists know this, 
but they always seem to forget it. It is the same with stars. When you look up into the night sky and you see all those stars, many of those stars you are seeing may not even exist anymore. We are only seeing the light that has reached us millions of years later. The stars themselves may have exploded or burnt out long ago. So Hubble is not studying galaxies. Hubble is only studying light. That light is bringing us information about what the galaxy looked like many light years ago. Now combine that with what we know about the wave and particle duality of light and about how studying particles affect the experiment. Light is both a wave and a particle but if you try to observe it you will only see a single path or a single history. Can Hubble be objective? No he cannot. Does Hubble's discovery prove that the universe started in a Big Bang? No, it does not. The observer influences the experiment and collapses the wave function. When Hubble looks out into the universe, he sees the light from distant galaxies taking a single path away from us and he concludes that the universe is expanding away from us. But he must be wrong. Why? Because light is a wave. A wave radiates in all directions at the speed of light. Hubble becomes subjective and egocentric. Light does not move toward us or away from us. Light radiates in all directions at the absolute speed of light. A galaxy is not a laser pointed at us. A galaxy is an omnidirectional light source, meaning that the light from a galaxy will radiate in all directions at the speed of light. Another glaring discrepancy with the Big Bang is the idea that light can somehow be traveling away from us faster and faster. How can the rate of expansion be increasing? Light can only travel at light speed. There is nothing faster than light. Not even light can travel faster than light. So if we are only seeing the light from distant galaxies and not the physical galaxy itself, how can that light be moving away from us faster and faster. You can slow light down with interstellar gases, dust or ice, but you cannot add to the speed of light. Any object you see will radiate light in a circle or sphere at the absolute speed of light. However, you are the observer. You can only see a single path of light. You cannot see an object from all 360 degrees. So, like time, light is relative to you. And, as I mentioned in the last video, light and time are in fact the same thing. The universe did not start in a Big Bang. The universe is created by circles of radiating light or energy. Light carries information in waves. Our brain processes that information and produces the image of the universe we see around us. The information is carried in the form of mathematics, broken down into shapes, geometry, angles and numbers. The Big Bang cannot possibly be right because on top of everything else I have just mentioned there is no explanation of what force is driving all those galaxies away from us. What astronomical force could possibly be defying gravity and pushing all those galaxies away from us? A galaxy is billions of stars. Big Bang theorists cannot tell you what is driving inflation and if the universe is expanding, what is it expanding into? See my next video in which I will explain more on how the universe is an intelligent mathematical matrix and did not start in a Big Bang. And please watch the previous videos. We are moving toward a profound revelation. Buy a copy of my book and keep it for posterity's sake. Thank you so much for your time.